Waterfall biologists recently finished the Midwinter Waterfall Survey. Today we're visiting with waterfall biologist John Polarski to go over all the details. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. John, what is the Midwinter Waterfall Survey? The Midwinter Waterfall Survey is actually our longest continuously run survey that we have for North American waterfall. And it started in 1935 and has been going on ever since. North Dakota has been contributing since about 1948. But it's just simply a, a survey of our wintering population of waterfall that we have in the state and then also throughout the country. John, how are the surveys conducted? We have game and fish staff across the state that are doing the surveys as well as partners with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service as well. And most of our ducks and geese that we're counting on this particular survey are coming from the Missouri River system and we survey those areas with aircraft. It's just a lot more efficient to be able to do it that way, but other areas of water that we have throughout the state that our other partners are, are surveying, they're typically doing that on the ground with the vehicle. Okay, and what did you find this year? So we had a little over 80,000 Canada geese that we found and nearly 3,000 mallards that we counted as well, in addition to other dabbling ducks, um, just a handful of those that, that remain in the state. Okay, and how does that compare to previous years? Obviously, weather plays a role. Yeah, it plays a huge role, and really, I think, you know, weather affects our wintering distribution of, of waterfall that we have in the state in two ways. One is with snowfall, and so in years that we have a lot of snowfall, it affects access for waterfowl um, to waste grain and, and agricultural fields, so that's a big food source that might be limited. The other is just the amount of ice cover that we have in any given year across the state. So years there it's really cold, we'll have uh, less open water that affects um, roosting habitat that our, our wintering waterfowl populations have access to. So in years that we've got rougher winters, we might expect maybe less than you know 50,000 Canada geese, just a couple of thousand mallards that are left in the state. In years like last year, where we had a lot of open water, we didn't have a whole bunch of snow cover, we you know, saw a huge population of wintering Canada geese in the state, over 300,000 and nearly 43,000 mallards that were in the state. So it can range you know, pretty widely just depending on, on our weather conditions. So this year is considered an average year? Yeah, more or less. You know, it's kind of interesting. You know, we didn't have a ton of snow cover in the central, south central part of North Dakota um, where we pick up most of our wintering waterfowl along the Missouri River and, and lower Lake Sakakawea. Um, we didn't have a lot of snow cover, but we did have a lot of ice cover. So it kind of, you know, balanced out. It was, this year's count was kind of to be expected. I think um, just kind of the lower end of average. You know, Lake Sakakawea actually froze over on January 4th this year, which was two days before we started our survey on January 6th. And so that obviously impacted what we were able to count. We ended up finding a lot of Canada geese right below the Garrison Dam this year. Um, those are birds that likely came off of the lake. Uh, just a couple of days prior and I'm sure you know with the lake freezing over it sent a lot of our Canada geese further south and out of the state. John you guys also fly over Lake Nelson just northwest of Bismarck a few 30-40 miles. Uh, why is that body of water open at this time of year? Well that one remains open just with the plant there the Minn Kota power plant and so that's an area that typically holds a lot of Canada geese and a lot of mallards and other waterfowl species that we count during the survey. And so, yeah, I mentioned the Missouri River being our, you know, our mainstay for where we count the bulk of our waterfowl in North Dakota, but also Nelson Lake and Oliver County produces a lot of ducks and geese during the survey as well. John, what do you use all this data for? I mean, you said it's kind of a national survey. What, what's the data used for? Yeah, well, it actually really serves as probably at least a primary source of data for our Arctic breeding populations of waterfowl. So you're thinking about our, our light geese, our cackling geese, uh, greater white-fronted geese. These are species that are notoriously difficult to survey because they breed in remote areas. And then, you know, during the breeding seasons when we're doing the bulk of our waterfowl surveys. And so they're really difficult to survey during the breeding season, obviously. And so when they migrate south into north or into the United States, that presents a unique opportunity for us to survey. So that's one big um, advantage of using this midwinter waterfall survey. The other thing too that it does is it provides us with distribution data of our wintering populations of waterfowl. And so since it's been going on since 1935, that's obviously a really um, powerful data set that we have now. So we're able to assess changes in that distribution of, of wintering waterfowl through time. And so, you know, one other thing to, to think about as well is that we still have hunting seasons that are actively going on in the southern part of the United States. And so we're doing the survey now to kind of assess where that distribution is of waterfowl 
while it's going on with active hunting seasons in other parts of the country. Sure. John, I always get the question after these programs run on the Midwinter Waterfalls uh, survey. You fly over the Missouri River, thousands of geese. How could you possibly count every goose when you're flying over? Well, and that's an important point to bring up, is this is not a census. So we're not getting a, a count of every single duck and every single goose that remains in the state of North Dakota. It's just an estimate or an index of abundance that we get. And so, you know, it's not a census, census it's an index of abundance and, and really just an estimate. We do our best to, to try and count as many as we possibly can, but it's really used to compare um, among years to try and detect trends in, in abundance of our wintering waterfowl populations. A lot of great information, John. Thank you. Thank you.